Botticelli's Christ as the Man of Sorrows is a very confrontational picture. What you see is the image of Christ staring at you with an expression in which sorrow seems to be mingled with a sense of anger at the suffering and the pain that he has had to endure on his way to crucifixion. He wears a crown of thorns that is as thick as a fat snake. His head is surrounded by these extraordinary balletic figures of angels who simultaneously carry the instruments of his torture and lament his pain. As you look into his eyes, you have the feeling that he is Christ suffering, but he's also Christ as God, who will one day stand in judgment over you. It's a painting that doesn't really ask you to admire it. It's a painting that asks you to look at it and possibly even to kneel down and pray for the state of your own soul. Botticelli was one of the leading painters of the Florentine Renaissance, and he's probably most famous for painting the birth of Venus alongside the Primavera. But in his later life, Botticelli turned away completely from that kind of erotic, secular work. And artists like Botticelli were even encouraged by Savonarola to burn their secular works, to purge themselves, to purify themselves, to focus on Christ and concentrate on the one thing that can save them, which is their Christian faith. It's suggestive and interesting that full frontal images of the face of Christ are not that common in the whole history of art. But at this moment in history, 1500, full of its apocalyptic fears and fervors, you do get this image and it recurs. Leonardo's Salvatore Mundi. Another image that I put into the same category is Dürer's self-portrait of 1500, in which Dürer shows himself as Christ. It harks back to earlier forms of Christian art which were seen by Botticelli as purer and more noble than the art of his own day. And I think that Christ as the Man of Sorrows demonstrates that. The most compelling thing about the picture is its utter single-mindedness. There are no distractions, there are no flourishes, there's nothing that's extraneous. It is a picture which you're meant not simply to look at and then move away from. It's a picture that you're meant to spend perhaps several hours on end with reading your Bible, looking at the painting, praying, meditating, contemplating. It puts you face to face with the idea of Jesus Christ and there's no avoiding the fact that that is what it does. It's uncompromising and I think that's its power. And once you've seen it, you can't forget it. You've been visited.